The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Give us this bread always, that he may live in us and we in him, and that strengthened by this food, we may live as his body in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Our first reading is found in 1 Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly, an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank, and laid down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him, and said, Get up and eat. Otherwise, get up and eat. Otherwise, the journey will be too much for you. He got up, and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. The Word of God. Let us read Psalm 34 responsibly. I will bless the Lord at all times. The praise of God shall ever be in my mouth. I will, I will glory the Lord. Let the Lord hear your voice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt God's name together. I saw, I saw the Lord who answered me and delivered me from all my prayers. Look upon the Lord and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I call. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear the Lord and delivers them. Take and see the Lord is good. Happy are they who take refuge in God. Our second reading is found in Ephesians, the fourth chapter. So then, put away falsehood. Let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down, down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling 
and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The Word of God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. Jesus said to the crowd, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the father who sent me. And I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace, peace, and mercy are yours from our triune God. It has been almost a year since I stood in front of you. It has been a changing year for me. I served at Our Saviors, which many of you know, 
As a ministry in context student, where I led worship, led adult Bible studies and conversations, and preached, I shared donuts and coffee at fellowship time, much like we do here. I've studied a lot, a lot, and completed my second year of seminary. In September, I'll begin my third year of seminary. It's hard to believe. I'll take four classes this fall, and I'll talk more about that um, in a newsletter that I'll send in for the grapevine. In June of this summer, I began a three-month internship as a hospital chaplain, where I have journeyed with people in their most helpless and vulnerable times. It has been life changing. My last day at the hospital is Friday. It doesn't seem like it can be here already. As I was talking with Pastor Mike before, the, before worship today, I said that my, my group, my CPE group, which is the chaplaincy uh, program at the hospital, has been very supportive of one another. And I don't know if I could have made it through CPE as a chaplain without them. Okay, let's get on to the gospel text now. I have struggled and wrestled with this text. I believe Jesus is the bread of life. And with my faith in Jesus comes the promise of eternal life. Jesus is very straightforward in this text, saying, I am the bread of life that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Well, I have a few questions that I want to ask Jesus. Why do people suffer and grieve? Why is there loss of jobs, opportunities, resources, education, and so on? Why at times do I feel empty in need of spiritual nourishment? Why has this summer felt like it was filled with tragic loss and grief? Why, Jesus, why? How can I be fed? How can you be fed? Each day people suffer and they grieve. As a chaplain, I have witnessed the pain and grief patients and families go through. I have experienced suffering and grief myself. I have witnessed the head-hanging sorrow of a grieving person, and it is heartbreaking. Where can they be fed? Where can I be fed? Where can you be fed? For me, I am fed here at church with you all around this table. For many years when I am struggling and upset, I find comfort and peace in the church, especially this one. Zion is and always will be my home. I am fed and spiritually nourished in this place. In Martin Luther's Sacrament of Holy Communion, which is part of the small catechism, one question asked is, what is the benefit of eating and drinking? His answer is, the words given for you and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins shows us that forgiveness of sin, life, and salvation are given to us in the sacrament through these words. Because where there is forgiveness of sin, there is life and salvation. We eat and we drink 
this bread and wine, the life-giving bread. When the bread is eaten and the wine is drank, we are transformed. Our faith is nourished. Christ, the true bread of life, provides a relationship with him and life forever in him. This is a promise for you and for me from Christ. And we can trust that promise. One of my professors told my class when we were asking how often we should come to the table, his answer was, as often as we need it. We benefit from the Holy Communion. And I don't know about you, but I need that life-giving bread. I recently read being filled with a life-giving bread of Jesus Christ, we become the living bread, Christ's own flesh for the sake of the world. At first I said, no way, I am not the living bread. I can't measure up to Christ. Then I had a sacred moment with a family. I was feeling particularly vulnerable and helpless this day. And I don't like feeling vulnerable and helpless. I met with a family whose loved one was near death. The patient never opened their eyes and never said a word. The family was deeply saddened and vulnerable and helpless. I met the family right there where they were, in the depths of sadness. We prayed, hung our heads low, and named the struggles of the family, and in all honesty, my own struggles too, that we were going through together. A sacred moment in the sacred place of the adult critical care room at the hospital. I can only hope that I was the living bread for the family, if only for a moment. I hungered for the grace of God, for the reassurance of love and hope in Christ Jesus. Christ, the living bread, is the ultimate comfort food for our bodies, our minds, and our stomachs to be filled with the grace of God. There is no greater comfort than knowing God is with us, especially in our struggles, and God loves us. Each time we come to this table, we receive the living bread, and God's promise is renewed. So I challenge you today to think of where you have been fed. Where do you find the, the life-giving bread? We are not spiritually fed in the same place and at the same, in the same way. Sometimes you may find that you have been spiritually fed in unexpected places like I was, alongside the bed of a dying patient whose family hung their heads in deep sorrow. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks and praise that you sent your son to be our life-giving bread. We thank you that we can trust in your promise and that we can hold on to you like a child holds on to the leg of a parent. We give you thanks for the different ways of being fed and for the promise of your grace and life eternal with you. In your holy name we pray. Amen.